This video is brought to you by my email list, which informs you of upcoming content, live streams, and most importantly, giveaways. Sign up now via the link in the description or at bestedmontonmall.com. And now, on with the show. As you may already know, based on the name and content of my channel, I'm a wee bit obsessed with West Edmonton Mall. Whether it's reminiscing about the past or trying new attractions for the very first time, well, I like them all. Sometimes I get to try the coolest stuff, like Canada's only indoor multi-level go-kart track, complete with drifting electric carts and amazing artwork. Other times, however, I get to talk about signs. I first noticed one of these several weeks ago, being raised above the Ice Palace, West Hampton Mall's iconic central skating rink. The rink first opened in 1983 in the same expansion that brought the first iteration of the mall's Fantasyland, one of Canada's most iconic amusement parks, known today as Galaxyland, powered by Hasbro. Back then, the rink was known as the second home of the Edmonton Oilers, who would practice at the mall regularly. The Stanley Cup champion Edmonton Oilers are a regular feature at this regulation size NHL rink, holding practices throughout their season. Crowds of fans gather to watch their heroes play, taking advantage of the chance to get right up close, chat with their favorites, or even ask for that special autograph. And it's only been recently that, after being absent for decades, the club has finally returned to the mall. The Oilers practice this afternoon at West Edmonton Mall. That's where we're doing inside sports from tonight. I'm by the Aldo, right at the end of Bourbon Street. Oscar Kleffbaum and Gaetan Haas are signing autographs just a few feet away. My name is Reed Wilkins. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and I am pleased to be joined by a gentleman who has a very interesting hobby, some might call it, perhaps some might call it an obsession even. Many would, yes. <laughs> Matthew Duchak is here, and the website and the YouTube channel, I guess. Yes. Uh, and the Twitter account, Best Edmonton Mall. In the 80s and 90s, Edmonton Oilers and other sports merchandise could be purchased at the Rinkside Oilers Champion Store. Its neon Oilers sign is burned into the memories of fans who used to watch the Dynasty-era Oilers practice in the mall all while being surrounded by stores and attractions. And when the Ice Palace first opened, it was quite popular. It was a common sight to see the ice surface completely packed with mall patrons enjoying some leisure time on the rink. The surrounding atrium was fully treed. Not the stylized tree decor that exists today, mind you, but rather lush, green, real trees, which, along with the massive overhead dome, Look at the size of that dome! evoked feelings of skating outdoors on a bright sunny day and the size of the area was emphasized by the surrounding mirrored wall faces. The expansive use of mirrors and gold-trimmed railings were style appropriate for the mid-1980s, and even today, they're a big part of how I remember West Hampton Mall growing up. I am sad to report, however, that most of the original gold trim and mirrors were eventually removed throughout the mall, though there is one area which still exists untouched. A time capsule, if you will. Just beside the Fantasyland Hotel, lives a snapshot of how the entire mall used to look. A small piece of West Hampton Mall, which preserves some history. A small piece which I hope never changes. Not to be confused with the original scoreboard that used to live in this area, sitting in front of Kites and Other Delights and Johnny Rockets, this new, circular, jumbotron-style display is certainly an attractive addition to the Ice Palace area. One might expect that primarily it'll be used to promote stores and attractions around the mall, and I think that makes sense. But displaying scores, playing music worthy of skating to, and even displaying information about the various events which take place at the Ice Palace are all definite functions of this screen, as is showing square dots, apparently. I gotta say, this is an impressive and welcome addition to the Ice Palace, and considering how nice it looks there, it's long overdue. But this brings us to another new screen in the mall. Back on April 9th, I was sent this image from a fan on Twitter. And to be honest, at first, I was quite taken aback. The new LED screen, placed directly over the Deep Sea Adventure Lake, looked to be simply massive. And after receiving images from others showing the screen powered on, I was still in shock. 
Was there really a simply massive screen hanging over what appeared to be the entire width of the lagoon area? Well, thankfully, no. The photos I saw to begin with suffered from forced perspective. Their positions and angles only made it look huge. But as you can see from different vantage points around the lake, while it's still quite large, it's nowhere near as dominating as I feared it might be. I had expected it to take up an insane level of space, and that it would block the views of one of the mall's most scenic locations. However, seeing it now, well, I can live with it. The screen resides on the north side of the lagoon, and because it's roughly midway down the length of the area, it's not so close to either end that it blocks or overwhelms the view of the world's largest indoor lake. It does, however, change that area, at least a little bit. I'm torn about this one. On one hand, ever since it opened in the mid-1980s, the mall's Phase 3 Lagoon has been an impressive and scenic area. The large screen draws the eye away from the water features, the scenic bridge, and the iconic Santa Maria in this area. Though, I suspect eye-catching is exactly what you're going for when deploying an advertising screen. On the other hand, I do like bright LED-lit screens. They remind me of hockey games and of Las Vegas. But more importantly, I also like what the implementation of these screens actually represent. Throughout this pandemic, we've heard nothing but horror stories about retail. About how much this whole situation is hurting small businesses, retail stores, malls, theaters, attractions. And yet, we've seen some pretty cool stuff arrive at the mall. Drive though only currently open for private bookings, launched and opened to the public during the pandemic. And Galaxy Land continues with its Hasbro transformation. And while it's always a bummer to see the World Water Park sitting idle, waiting for its time to reopen, elsewhere the mall is still adding new, and I'm sure, expensive additions, which I think goes a long way to show how the mall is continuing to try to improve itself, even during these difficult times. So, the next time you're at the mall, and you notice a new flashy sign over one of your most loved attractions, stop and think back. Remember the lush green trees, and the busy ice surface in the middle of Phase 2. Remember the expansive use of mirrors, and the gold-trimmed railings. Remember the Dynasty-era Edmonton Oilers, and a time when they had an official second home, at our city's own, West Edmonton Mall. Have you seen the impressive new screens at West Edmonton Mall? What do you think of them? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel, give us a like and a share, and maybe even visit our Patreon page. And why not check out one of our other videos, all about the greatest indoor show on earth, West Edmonton Mall. Oh, and thanks for watching.